sorry I'm a couple minutes late, but sometimes Wi-Fi does not want to work here at the, the warehouse. It's kind of crazy at times. So behind me is the piece that I worked on that I chit-chatted with everybody about. Um, hey, Michelle. And this is the piece that started out, actually it didn't start out black. It started out some off-white crackled kind of mess. And then when I got it, somebody had kind of slopped black paint all over it. It was kind of messy. And I actually held on to this for about three years before I did something with it. And I love the old wood in the back, but I knew that I didn't like the black. And so I decided I had a, uh, a piece that, you know, I knew what a finish that I wanted on it. Um, and it's actually huge. It's almost nine feet long. And you can see, I'm 5'5", five five and I can't even reach the top of it. So it is big, big, big. Um, it is headed to the Cotton Depot in Monroe. And I had hoped to get it up there tomorrow, but I actually had to get a boot because of the fall down the stairs. So I'm a little slow this week. So I don't think it'll go tomorrow, but maybe we can do it Tuesday. We'll see. Um, everybody wanted to see the finish. Um... This finish is similar to a finish that I've seen before, but I like it a little bit more rustic. You guys that follow me know I love patina. So that's the thing. Um, I wanted it a little more rustic and it needed it. It, it needed something. Um, black is totally not my taste. Um, I like color and I think you're gonna be shocked at the colors I use. Well, I ran and grabbed a door that a we had been messing around with in class one day. And um, so that is what I'm gonna show you how to do this finish. This finish is not nearly as complicated as you think it is. Um, you guys can share this video. Several people asked me about it and I've gotta be honest with you, we've got several things going this week and with my boot and all, I've been a little slow. So um, I didn't get it shared out there. So if you guys will share it, I appreciate it. But I wanna show you. and. Um, Somebody asked me in class yesterday. I had a great class in Byron. Dee, thanks for coming. Um, I had a girl that drove all the way from Covington, Georgia, down to Byron, Georgia, to take my class yesterday. And um, she asked me why I did this. So I'm going to tell you guys. The reason I go live and show you how to do finishes and stuff is because when I first started four years ago, uh, I asked about a finish. How did somebody get a finish? It was fabulous. And she said, it's a very complicated finish and that was it so I don't like to tell anybody I don't mind telling you exactly how I got the finish and I think there's the brand ambassadors they're real good to help you guys and everything and if you guys ever don't understand anything I'm saying hit me up on Facebook let me know okay so this is our door now this is not black in all fairness this is coffee bean um but I like I say Got so much going on, church this morning and everything, so I did not have a chance to get us a black piece. But I don't think you guys will be able to tell the difference. And I had to put a little light in here that's a little blinding. So if I act like I can't see, sorry about that. All right, so we're starting with the, the base color was the same. It's an off-white. And then we went to coffee bean instead of black. So the this is, um, I don't think it's real wood. Uh, it, it, it might be, but it doesn't really give me that impression. But either way, this is a cabinet door that was off-white, and it's been completely painted in coffee bean. What I, uh, I, what I don't think you guys understand is a lot of times when you see a layered finish like this, you think there's a lot of full coats of paint, and there's not. So that's why I'm doing this today, to show you how how easy it is to accomplish a layered finish. Most layered finishes, you don't have um, a whole lot of paint involved. So this does have two coats of coffee bean because one of my students put it on there. Normally, this piece back here, I'm not even sure. I told you it was just a giant mess of black. So the color that I put on next is, you're looking at the piece behind me, is this. It is Dixie Bell's Peacock. And yes, I know it's bright and everything and it is but if you know me I love color so I'm going to show you what we're going to do we have a blow dryer to speed up this process because you know normally mine don't take very long I like to just start putting some all around 
I don't like to put a heavy coat, but I just like to start putting a little bit of paint here and there. And in some places, it's going to have less on your brush than it does other places. But you're not trying to cover up the black. You're trying to give the black some personality. And in this case, it's not black, but it might as well be. It's coffee bean. Do you guys know what Dixie Belle coffee bean looks like? It is a fabulous color. I use it on half of everything. All right, and it do, you don't want a ton of paint on your brush. And I am using a Dixie Belle Flat Large on this. All right, we're going to just put a little bit more. And you put so little paint that it dries very quickly. I mean, it dries by the time I'm swiping it all over this piece. It's dry because I am not putting a heavy coat at all on. And I'll show you once I get it all finished. I know you guys can't see everything I'm doing. I'm sorry about that. I tried to make it so that you could see as much of it as possible. All right. So now what I've done is I have kind of gone over my piece with the amount of blue that I want on it. And yes, I know this blue is a whole lot brighter than the blue behind me, but the blue behind me was this exact color. So, when I tell you that's what it is, that's what it is. I'm going to turn us a fan on and let it blow so that we can get dry. And that way we can go to the next step. So, basically what I've done is this was off-white, then somebody made a mess of black, and then um, I put this color over it. I put... Dixie Bell Peacock over it. So we're going to blow this a minute. And the next color that we're going to put is Dixie Bell Pinecone. And I don't know if you guys do very many faux, faux finishes, but Dixie Bell Pinecone is great for mimicking rust. Um, it, it doesn't really have the red undertone, but it has great brown to it. So it's great for mimicking rust. If that's what you're going for, and a lot of times... I don't think newbies, I don't think if you're new to painting, you understand that layering is super easy. And it's really almost kind of sloppy. I mean, for lack of a better word, it's almost kind of sloppy. But um, once you get it all together, it doesn't look like nearly as hot a mess. Because you can see behind me, this is what it ends up looking like. So you just have to kind of step out of your comfort zone and realize that maybe it is kind of a mess while you're doing it. So let's see how we're doing. Okay, so it's almost dry, and you can see what we have right now. All right, so now we're going to go back in, and we're going to put some pine cone on there. And I want it to have the feel that maybe it has a little bit of rust here and there, that it had a different color on it. So you want to just randomly add little divots of pine cone. And I don't like a lot on my brush, and I don't have... Hang on one second. Those of you that follow me know me and my dog food trays. I like to have something to unload my brush on, and I love dog food trays for that. So, I'm going to go around, and I want to add just a little bit of... And I mean just hints of it, because I want it to have... just hints of different colors on it. If you get too much, wipe it off. Take a, take a uh, paper towel, a baby wipe or something, and wipe it off. Oh yeah, see, so you know I love my floor health trays. They're fantastic. All right, so then you go in and you put your pine cone on there, and a lot of times, You'll see that I like when it's got great details like this, I'll put the pine cone on those details because I really want those to stand out. All right. So we're going to put this on here. A little bit more. 
You guys can't, I don't know if you can see the bottom, but we're going to put a little bit more on there. Alright, so now you guys can see kind of what it looks like. It's kind of, it's just kind of messy. I mean, for lack of a better word, it's kind of messy. And a lot of times when I'm doing this, um, I'll put some on there and then I'll look at it and I'm like, eh, it probably needs a little bit more because what you've got to remember is when you're working on a finish like this, if it has a pattern to it, it's not going to look the way you want it to. You're going for an organic finish, which means it can't have a pattern to it. Organic finishes, I mean, in nature, how often do you see it have a pattern? Right? Okay, so we're going to put this up here. All right. So there's what it looks like so far. Okay, so we're going to sit it in front of the fan just a minute and we're going to get our next color out. So, so far we have black or whatever color you want. Dixie Bell Caviar is what this looked like. It was some other black, I don't know what it was, but it had adhered very well. So, other than the fact that it was super messy, then it, it was fine. And I know a lot of you guys, you go to a lot of trouble. You can always build on what you got. If it's adhering well, build on what you got. Don't reinvent the wheel. So we've put our black on there because somebody else did. And then now we've put peacock on there. Our next color that we're going to go with is Dixie Belle Patina. And I don't think mine even still have labels anymore. But it's Dixie Belle Bronze Patina. Okay? And Dixie Belle Bronze Patina is... Um, it's one of their patina paints, and if you follow me, you know I love patina. So that's why we're going to use Dixie Belle Patina, because it's what has given some of this the haze, for lack of a better word. Um, it gives this old look right here, and that's what I'm going for. And then once we use, we've already used our pine cone, once we use our Dixie Belle Patina, we got to let it dry, and then while our second coat is wet, we're going to add our reactive solution to it. We're going to use blue reactive spray on it. And then once we've done that and it starts changing, then we're going to go to our gilding waxes to intensify some of the details and add the shadows and everything. I don't know if you guys can tell from where you are, but once I got the finish that I wanted, I went back in with Dixie Belle gilding wax. And this has some detail here, and it has steps here. And I went back in with both black and bronze gilding wax, as well as the green patina gilding wax. Because even though um, it, it gives it a lot of patina, more is more to me. If you guys watch me, you know that. Okay, so we've got this one dry. And you guys can see, this is kind of the mess we have right now. Okay, so now we're going to go back in, and we're going to use our Dixie Belle Bronze Patina. And I know some of you may not use as much of it as I do, but that's okay. I like the way it looks. And it adds another element to my finish. Not only does it add color, but it also adds a good texture. And I don't always brush mine. A lot of times you'll see me dab it a little bit because I want it to have um, the, the texture of Patina, you know, once something starts getting a patina to it, it usually has a little bit of rust or, you know, if you're using a bronze, it's got a little bit of maybe the, the metal or the wood or whatever is buckling a little, so you want it to have some texture. All right. Hang on, let me get it down here at the bottom. All right, so now you guys can see it's a lot messier now, but it has our bronze on it. We're going to stick it back in front of the fan for a second. I'm sorry, I would have liked to have shown you without all of these pauses, but the best thing to do is to show you the process uh, because that way it makes it easy for you. Uh, if you have questions about any of this as I'm doing it, I, I can't read. I only see two comments at a time, so I'm sorry. Oh, my baby, he's better. He's not good, but he is so much better. Um, and, you know, he's my special needs boy, so I worry about all of them, but especially my little Amos. And little is relative, I know. He's a big boy. All right, so now we've got this, and it's drying pretty quickly. 
And when we put the patina spray on there, what we're going to do is we're going to um, use the blow dryer because the heat from the blow dryer really helps to intensify um, the color of the bronze patina. And I'm going to tell you guys another little cheat. Um, if you're in a really big hurry, you can go ahead and put your blue spray on your first coat. It's not going to give you the intensity that it will on the second coat, but if you're in a hurry, spritz it a little, put your second coat on there, and you'll love it. Um, you know me, I'm, if there's a shortcut to take, I'm going to take it because I love to, but just a little shortcut you can do. I did not make my apron. A friend of mine made it because I am such, such, such a Grinch fan. Could you use a heat gun? Yes, but I don't recommend it for newbies because you can bubble your paint if you use a heat gun. I've used a heat gun, but you got to pay attention when you're using a heat gun because you will bubble paint in a New York minute. And you know, here in Georgia, like last Thursday, it was 82 degrees. So I could, I didn't need a heat gun. I could have made my patina work. Okay, so you see, our first coat is done. Now we're going to go to our second coat. I can see I'm losing lots of people, and I'm sorry, most of the time my lives are not this long. But I don't want somebody to say that I didn't show them how to do this finish because it's super easy if you just take the time to do it. Unless you're working on a nine-foot piece. If you're working on a nine-foot piece, it takes a little longer. All right. And somebody suggested the other day when I did my live on brush cleaning, they use a flea brush. So just an FYI, um, you can uh, also use a flea brush for cleaning your brushes if you let them die like I do. And Molly does. All right, so there we are. We have now put on two coats of our patina and we have put on our reactive solution and you guys are gonna have to listen to some noise a minute because we are going to use the blow dryer and speed up this process. Sorry for the noise. Give me just a second. One more minute, sorry, but I want you guys to get the full feel of how it looks now. And if it's still wet, it's brighter than it actually ends up being. Okay, so now it's not 
completely dry yet. But can you guys see where it is dry? Can you get what it is? Okay. Exactly. So much fun watching paint dry. Okay, so now that we've got it, once it's completely dry, I'm going to get up here up close so you guys can see. Can you see how we have changed the finish completely? And then what I like to do, you can see, if you dry it really fast, can you see the crackles that it causes? That's because I didn't let my paint dry completely and I, dry, I quick dried it. If you ever get a crackle in your finish, you know that it dried... It didn't dry evenly. That's what causes the crackle. Can you see all of that? That's why I like to use a blow dryer because now we have crackled this so that it looks a little older. Now, once you've gotten it to this point, it's just a matter of doing whatever you want to to it. So I'm going to show you. Um, well, we're going to have to dry it a little bit more. I'm sorry because I can't do what I want without getting some of this off the front of it. So now that we've got the front of it basically dry, you guys can see it has a sheen to it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our Dixie Belle black gilding wax, okay? And if you'll notice, it, if you've not seen the black gilding wax, it's fantastic. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit these high points because I really want those to show up. And I'm just gonna give them a little bit of emphasis, okay? If you'll drag your brush perpendicular to what you're doing, you'll get a little bit of an emphasis. And I'm gonna go in these crevices because I want it to have really nice shadows in those crevices. And don't be precise with it. This is an organic finish. We're looking for something that's been rusty and aged. And guess what? Things don't age evenly, okay? All right. So now keep in mind, this door never had any crackle on it or anything like that. I just quick dried it because I know the secret. If you quick dry it and your paint doesn't dry evenly, guess what happens? Crackle. And in some cases, you don't want that to happen. But when I'm doing an old piece, I love for it to happen. So I help it as much as I can. All right. So now you guys can see what we've got. We have a nice old door. But we're not finished yet because we've got to have... Hang on, I got, oh, I got stuff in my bronze. Okay, so the other thing that I love is Dixie Belle's green patina. Have you ever seen Dixie Belle's green patina? Okay, Dixie Belle's green patina adds a whole nother level to your pieces. It's great to go over. Um, I know a lot of people love the bronze patina, but they don't want it to have very much of a shine. The best thing to do, go over it with some green patina and it really changes the game up, okay? Just kind of randomly put it around, and you think you can't see it, but I'm telling you, it really makes it look beautiful. So can you guys see what we've done so far? Okay, so we're putting our, we're gonna put a little bit more of our green on here because it adds another element to it. And now we're gonna go back in with a little bit of the bronze because I want a little metallic hint on these details. Just a little bit so that when you look at it in a certain light, it's just enough to give it a little nudge. Hang on, Ooh, wrong brush. We don't want to do that. All right, now, if you don't like anything that you've come up with, if you don't like what you created, take a sanding block to it because I'm going to show you what we're going to do. You guys see what we've got so far, but let's say this is not what you were going for, and of course, there's my sanding block. Let's say we decided that this is not what we were going for, okay? This is not what you were going for. Go back through your piece in places. Just do a little bit of light sanding here and there, and it'll change it up a little, okay? Okay. You can get rid of any anything you don't like. So you can change it up. So now you guys see what we've done. All we did was it started with a dark color, whether it's Dixie Belle caviar, coffee bean, whatever it may be. 
Then we added Peacock. And keep in mind, Peacock is not what you would normally think to add. It is a very, very, very um, bright blue, okay? So after we added the Peacock, then we went in with Dixie Belle Pinecone to give it some faux rust feel. And then after we added the Pinecone, that's when we went in with Dixie Belle um, Bronze Patina. And then the second coat of Bronze Patina, while it is still wet, we add our Dixie Belle Blue Spray, and that's what gives it. Now, keep in mind, I can go back in and make this patina more. All I have to do is add a little bit more of my patina paint. Let's say I wanted a little bit more right here. Just go back down through there, here and here, and while it's wet, add a little bit more of the spray. You can brush the spray on. You can do whatever you want to do. You can add as much or as little of these colors as you want and make it what you want it to be. You totally don't have to, to do anything that you don't want to do. But keep in mind, when you're trying to do a piece like this, organic is what you're going for, okay? If there's a pattern, um, then that's not what would naturally occur. All right. Well, I don't want to take up your whole afternoon. I just wanted to show you how simple it is. And it it's different when you're working on little bitty small pieces versus working on a door like this. You can streak it. You can, in fact, if this turns out not to be the color that you want it to be, go back in and add a little, do a little bit of dry brushing with some coffee bean. Um, you can go back in and put some caviar back in it. Just anything um, that you would like to do that you want more of. Me, I'm probably going to put a little bit more of this on there. But that way you guys can see. It's very simple to accomplish. Just layer, layer, layer. The spray actually reacts. Dixie Belle's patina paints have metal in them. And the bronze that I use today actually has little particles of bronze in it. So when I put this reactive solution on there, it causes a natural patina. And now if I don't top coat this, it'll continue to patina from now on. Um, but if I opt to top coat it, that seals off all of the oxygen and it won't get any more patina on it. So what does the spray do? It causes a patina. All right. Well, this is longer than usual, but I knew that a layered finish was going to kind of take a few minutes. If you guys have questions, like I say, you can see I put a little bit more spray on this piece than I did on this piece. But this piece will look more like that once this dries. Um, the spray is what causes the age defect here and there. And you can see I sand it back in places just so that you get an idea of what it took to do this piece. It's not as complicated as it looks. I would like to tell you that it was, but it's not. Okay, so if you guys have questions, um, hit me up. I'm always at 44 Marketplace. Creative Finishes by Pam, and I'm happy to help. Thanks. Have a great Sunday night.